Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We're focusing on the precious metals and some of the precious metals charts as I am chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of the Daily Gold. Now Jordan, we have gold and silver still in a bit of a correction. Gold is trading a little under 1950. That's on the spot and futures markets. We're also seeing uh, some of the stocks broadly being down. I feel like the stocks, at least some of the larger stocks, very much following the gold price. We can get into some of the juniors a bit later, but first and foremost, gold under 1950. What are you seeing for the potential continuation of this correction? Well, I think with gold specifically, Corey, um, the metals have, have been uh, stronger than the miners. So the miners have been lagging since uh, a week or two before they peaked. Um, so looking at gold, I mean, it had a decent bounce. It, it, it traded well below 1900, but made a bullish hammer about two weeks ago. And then it rallied back up. You know, we had the Buffett bounce at the beginning of this week. It's faded in both the stocks and the metals. And uh, the short term trend to me looks like it's going to continue to the downside. And gold, um, if we get a, it's not going to happen this week, but if we get a close below 1900, just a daily close below 1900, uh, there's some downside risk probably to the low, um, 1800s. So that's something I'm looking at. I mean, there's really strong support, I'd say around 1760 to 1800. So, um, I, we can't predict the future, but, uh, if the correction continues, um, uh, I, th I think we could see gold. And again, if we see a daily close below 1900, we could, there, there's a risk that it could make its way towards the low 1800s. So, and, and as I've said in the past, Corey, I don't think that's, that's a huge deal because I don't think the stocks ever really priced in more than 1900 gold. Yeah. They got almost reached 2100. That's great. But the, the market, as far as the stocks never really discounted anything above 1900 so I, I wouldn't be terribly concerned if we saw more weakness in gold and i you know if i had to guess one way or another i do think uh we're probably going to see more weakness over the next couple weeks okay hey you're not alone in looking as low as those high 1700 dollars figures as a, a very strong resist or support level you mentioned that buffett bounce though that news broke at the tail end of last week monday gold silver opened up very strongly it seemed like a lot of that action was due to that news that buffett last quarter was buying barrett gold how much does that throw off technicals or the general correction when you have this really out of the blue news story that did cause some market moves it's it's hard to say because we never know what would have happened without that news but um i mean to me i think it just extended the correction uh by a day or two um because otherwise if we're looking we talked about this last time Corey, but if we're looking at the, the 2009 correction that began in February as kind of a good comparison, uh, that in terms of price, that correction bottomed in day 15. I believe we're in day 12 right now. So um, to equal that in the next three or four days, I mean, GDX would probably need to correct close to 10%, which is a lot. And so to me, it just, it just kind of threw it, – it, that news threw us off course by – a day or two potentially, but to me, we're still, we're, we're back on course now. Uh, even if the, you know, th this correct, even if it might take a, a few more days or a week, mo week more than it did in, uh, early 2009 for the market to correct. Um, so it just, it just kind of extended, um, the, uh, you know, how long it, it would take the market to make the price low. I mean, it was a pretty big, it's a pretty big gap up we had on on Monday. And then even on Tuesday, if you look at the stocks, they gapped up again, but there was huge selling. So it's just, I mean, if you think about driving and following a road, we just kind of went uh, went off course for a little while, but we the, the trend in the corrective pattern didn't change that much. 
All right, what about silver, too? Because silver, really, ever since July, almost went parabolic upwards. It entered July under 19 under $20, and shot up to almost a high of $30, just short of $30. Currently correcting as well, a little under $27. Silver's still a long way off of its all-time highs, but... Hey, that move, that strong move higher did need a little bit of uh, maybe momentum taken out of it. And that is the correction that we're seeing. What are some of your targets for silver? For silver, uh, there's initial support. Um, I want to say in the 23 to 24 dollar area. So if we look at um, a daily chart, uh, the strongest support probably looks to be around uh the the mid to upper 23 area now i'd say um the lowest support judging from when silver went parabolic is probably in the mid 22s so those are levels that i would look at but ultimately Corey, um that breakout through 20 and 21 i wouldn't be surprised if um 21 dollars isn't tested at some point or or maybe it's only 22 uh but again i'd i'd i don't i'd also say this which i've, I've said before um I, I don't think the silver stocks really factored in anything above 23 or 24 so the fall from 2675 where we are now down to 23 yeah stocks will get hit but i don't think the stocks ever really priced in more than 23 or 24 and in addition to that I mean, if silver bases around 21 or 22, those are still really high prices, even for the marginal projects. So it's, I mean, uh, other than the, the initial selling that we're going to see, I mean, if silver bases around 21, 22, it's perfectly fine by me. That's still a really good price for, again, even marginal projects. So if you think that the silver stocks really didn't price in anything above 22, 23, gold stocks didn't price in anything above, well, 1800, 1700, whatever you said there, does that mean that during this correction, these stocks are going to be able to hold up a bit better? It's a very good question. And I'm going back to 2009, what happened, which is very interesting, is the correction in GDX lasted only two months in terms of time and then it started grinding higher made a new high the correction in gold was five or six months before gold started to move higher and eventually it had that big breakout above a thousand dollars the previous peak which was really significant um so by comparison i think uh, this time around gold was able to peak at 2100 and not 1900 which would have made for a perfectly clean comparison but um so gold is going to correct and consolidate and that next move up going above 2100 will be really significant. However, Corey, the metals went a little parabolic, whereas the stocks did not. So what I could see happening is that this correction in metals, it takes longer than it does for the miners, similar to what happened in the middle of 2009. As I just said, two-month correction in the stocks, then they grinded higher, whereas gold was still um, in its correction in terms of time, and it, it hadn't started to make the breakout move until month you know, five or six, depending on how you look at it. So I, I think we could see something similar, because if gold bases around 1,800, silver bases around 21, 22, those are still really good prices for the entire industry, and I don't think that's um, for most of the stocks, I don't like, I don't think that's going to make a huge difference because as I said, I don't, I don't think the market really priced in anything above 1900 or, uh, 23, 24 silver. So if the, if the miners or if the metals come down to those levels and they stabilize there, I think it's, it's a good thing for the sector. And, and when that happens, we could see the miners, um, start to bottom out and, you know, base, and then grind higher. That whole process, I think that could happen in the miners ahead of the metals, similar to what happened in the middle of 2009. 
All right. Now, Jordan, the last comment here, something you and I were talking about off mic. We were looking at our individual portfolios and a lot of the juniors that we hold, the exploration plays. And one thing I was noticing is that these juniors broadly were holding up quite well compared to, well, where they were not that long ago and had a nice run higher and compared to the pullback and high volatility that we were seeing in the metals prices. Now, today's a little bit of a different story because I am seeing a bit more of a sell-off in some of these juniors that I hold. And really over the last week, I've found that these juniors bounce back, but their bounces back haven't quite been as strong as they were uh, over the last couple months. What do you think about that environment where some of these better juniors, the ones that you and I follow, they're still showing some relative, I don't want to call it strength, but not huge weakness right here. Yeah, I mean, I made the same observation in a flash update yesterday. I mean, it, it's interesting how the, um, as you're saying, how the, the smaller juniors have held up better. And I, I think there's a couple of reasons for that. I think, number one, uh, even if we're looking at GDXJ, GDXJ in the very big picture, it's not as overextended as GDX is. I mean, GDX got up to the, I think, 46, and its breakout was at 31. Uh, which was a, you know, it happened a month before, month or two before GDXJ. It, GD, GDX's big breakout, its resistance level was uh, around 51 or so. So, and GDXJ did not get too far above that level like GDX did. So, GDXJ, just in the bigger picture, not quite as extended as GDX. And so, we, we could take it a step further. And even the, s- the smaller juniors, they're not even as extended as GDXJ. So, they're not as overbought. The juniors that we're talking about, smaller juniors, they're not as overbought as the metals or even the larger juniors or the uh, seniors. So that's you know one reason why they've held up better. Another reason is we've had a, a lot of new people coming into the sector in the last month or so. And so I think you know some of those people have probably been buying the initial dips. So and then the third thing, Corey, as we just said in the last question, um, you know, the potential for metals to bottom and base at levels that are really, really good prices for the entire industry. That's, that's a positive for the smaller juniors. It doesn't, it it doesn't really change that much, you know, whether gold is at uh, 2000 or 1850 uh, or 1875, it doesn't, doesn't make a huge difference. It's more about the sentiment and the optimism for the entire industry. So I think those are the reasons why we've seen this, the smaller juniors hold up, better than everything else so far. Uh, I mean, I, I am seeing uh, they're starting to get hit today, and so they'll we'll probably see more selling there if the sector continues to correct. But uh, again, you know, it's a needed correction for the sector and, and really nothing to be concerned about. And it's another reason why you got to buy and hold quality uh, for the long run, you know, for the next, at least the next year or two. Trying to trade in and out is really difficult, and it's better to buy and hold, and trim your winners along the way. All right, Jordan, we're going to wrap it up. That is a very good point to end on here. Thanks for sharing some of uh, the updated targets that you have for the precious metals and also the general environment, this correction, how you see it unfolding. Jordan, thanks for your time on this Friday. Have a great weekend.